Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about getting started in an IT career and how your home lab can actually help you do that. Or maybe you're already in an IT career like a help desk role or desktop support and you're wanting to get to that next level. Talk about how you can use your home lab and just your own personal experience to propel your career into that role that you're wanting to be in. Before I get into that, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. We're almost at a thousand. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and watching my videos. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate it so much. So like I said, I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about your home lab and creating a home lab, which if you don't have one, I have some videos about setting up a Proxmox server at home. You can check that out if it's something that you're interested in, and there's going to be future videos more geared around the Microsoft stuff as well, coming from my own personal experience. I myself started in desktop support many years ago, used a lot of personal experience that I was gaining while I was in that role, and also experience that I could get from the job itself to get myself out of that desktop support role and into other roles that I got after that. So everything I'm saying here is coming from a point of experience that I've had personally, so it's not like I'm somebody who's never done this before and I'm just feeding you full of crap. That's not the case. So let's go ahead and jump into the content here. Like I said, I'm going to talk about some of the common starting points of IT, like the help desk and such, and then start talking about the alternative approach. And there's nothing wrong with starting in a help desk or a desktop support role. Like I said, I did it. But there are other things you could do that may help you get a higher level position starting out with, or again, you know, these methods can help you get out of that base help desk role or desktop support role as well. We're gonna talk about potential roles that you could get with lab experience. And then I'm gonna call out some very specific resources that you can use that are freely available to help you get one of those roles as well. So first, let's talk about the common starting points. So that's going to be the help desk and desktop support. They're very similar, but there are some differences. So the help desk is mainly going to be phone calls and chats, and you're going to be working through tickets, doing general troubleshooting type activities. Depending on the company, you might do some software support. Maybe your company uses some very specific software and you've been trained to support that. Then you may be helping users on that level and then escalating from there doing password resets, you know, you may do some general troubleshooting, um, but outside of that, that's pretty much going to be left to other positions. And desktop support is very similar to the help desk, except it's going to be in person, and you're going to probably be doing some hardware support, replacing keyboards, mice. You might be tearing down computers and replacing different components. You might be putting out a bunch of new computers or deploying new laptops to users. You're also going to do software support. You may even be assisting other IT departments such as networking when they don't have somebody available to do it in person and they need to use you as kind of a middleman or like their, their hands to actually do the work while they guide you through it. Both of these roles, generally the A-plus certification and Microsoft fundamental certs and fundamental certs from for other technologies are generally going to help you get these roles. Granted, you could probably get some of these roles without either one of those certifications. If you're currently in one of these roles, then you're going to want to use the benefit of, of gaining this corporate knowledge and how corporate IT works the type of software that you use, the tools that you use as a company to further your experience and to get more targeted experience. So then maybe you get certifications that are related to uh, solutions that your company uses specifically. And that's going to help you get out of this desktop support role or the help desk role. The home lab can also help you with that, which we're going to be talking about next. So creating a home lab, uh, depending on your work environment, you're probably not going to see Proxmox, but I have videos about creating Proxmox in your home environment, and that's just going to help you get your feet wet with virtualization, the hypervisors, and some other things. And it's going to give you the ability to create additional, like say, Windows servers or Linux servers or web servers or whatever it is that you want to do, and you're going to be able to create those easily inside of Proxmox. 
when you're in a corporate environment, you're going to find things like VMware, which is going to be the ESXi, and then you're going to find Citrix, and there may be others as well. But you could create those in your home lab, but from my knowledge, they're not going to be free. I think you can get ESXi on an evaluation, but I'm not sure about Citrix. You, all, you also have Cisco networking, and you could you know, create a lab around Cisco devices, or you could use Packet Tracer, GNS3, things like that to be able to simulate a network environment to learn about networking. You can also, like I said, set up Windows Server, so you can do Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, SCCM, Intune. All those are very common in a corporate environment, and being able to mimic that in your home lab is going to be greatly beneficial because you're going to be able to get a lot of hands-on experience with those tools, learn the ins and outs of them, deploy them, and you'll know how it works from the ground up. And those skills are valuable in an associate level position for companies. You also have, like I said, Linux servers you could be setting up if that's something that you're really into. Uh, I don't see it a lot in, in the company I work for. There is a little bit of Linux, but it's not much. Uh, but there are companies out there where that's completely different. They don't use Windows servers. They're all Linux or whatever. So, you know, depending on what it is you're wanting to get into, that's what you want to build your home lab around. That goes into the AWS, you know, Amazon's cloud offering, Azure, Google Cloud, etc. You know, those can be great tools as well, and they do offer a lot of free time or, or you know, a free period where you can use these services at no cost. And I'll be talking about those in the resource section, some specific examples of things you can use. But you could set up an environment in one of the these cloud providers and learn the ins and outs of setting up databases, virtual machines, different web services, you know, web servers, APIs. You also have the cloud networking aspect of things. You can get a lot of very specific experience by just setting this up on your own and working through it. You know, just get an idea like I want to set up a server that does this in AWS, then go do it. You know, you're going to gain experience through that. And again, I offer some resources at the end related to Azure and AWS and Google Cloud that are going to help you learn those skills. Also, you have certifications. You can use your lab and the experience that you have in the lab environment in order to pass the certification. So Microsoft, AWS, all of them offer different types of certifications that can help you get into associate level positions. That could be server engineers, cloud engineers, network engineers, desktop engineers, and different companies have different titles for all these. I've seen platform engineer, um, deployment engineer. There's all different kinds of terms out there. You're really wanting to look at the skills that they're wanting for that job and what the actual job description is to figure out, you know, what it is that you need to learn because they're all going to be called something different. But the home lab is going to be an invaluable resource to you to be able to get in there and not have to worry about breaking something. In a corporate environment, you can't just go play around with stuff unless you have a dev, dev environment. Uh, but at home, you can do whatever you want with it. And if you break it, okay, well, then tear it down and recreate it. More experience for you. So, like I said, the home lab is a very simple way to gain real world experience. So why would someone hire you with lab experience? And this is coming from me being in a role in a past where I would have hired somebody or been in control of hiring someone. And things that I look at are curiosity, you know, how motivated are they? Are they a self learner? Do they ask me every little question, you know, or do they go try to figure it out on their own? Now, of course, in a corporate environment, it's okay to go figure it out on your own, but don't go implementing it, you know, without, you know, doing your checks and balances, let's say. But why would someone hire you with lab experience? So the lab experience is real ex experience. I mean, you really are manipulating and using the solution, whatever it is. So the experience is real. And typically people who set up 
lab environments are self-learners, they're motivated, they're curious, or else they wouldn't even have bothered with setting up the home lab. So that is a huge plus for someone hiring an employee. A lot of uh, hiring managers don't necessar necessarily even look at the experience for certain types of roles. It's just about what kind of person are you, you know? And these self-learner, motivated, very curious type people can be very valuable because they're not going to sit idly, you know, they're always going to be learning, expanding their skills and knowledge, and that is a really great benefit to any company. Also, a lot of IT people that have worked in corporate environments, sometimes they, they bring bad habits from their previous company. And with you working in a lab environment, you don't really have any bad habits that were instilled by another corporation and the way that they did things. And you could have picked up bad habits while setting up your home lab, of course, but, you know, it's it's more common that people bring something bad from another company to this company, and it's very difficult to get them to unlearn whatever that bad habit was. So you're not going to generally have those issues if you're just coming from a regular career that wasn't IT and you didn't have any corporate experience prior to that. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that you gained something from it, especially if you are looking to get into IT or you're in one of those low level IT positions and you feel stuck. You're not stuck. There is a way out and you don't need crazy hardware to do a lot of this kind of stuff. Like I said, the Proxmox, I have videos about how to set that up and other things. There's going to be future videos about some Windows-related services like Active Directory and Azure AD, stuff like that. So be looking forward to those videos. But uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of the resources that you can use that I've used personally in my career to help you grow. For the Microsoft side of things, the Microsoft 365 Developer Program is a huge benefit. You're getting an E5 license, which is an expensive license, to be able to play around in your own tenant that you can do whatever you want with. And you don't have to worry about breaking any corporate environments or anything like that. This is your environment to test out everything you want to test. It renews every 90 days as long as you continue to use it. And as far as I know, there's no maximum length. I've had mine for around two years now and they haven't cut mine off and I don't use it every day or anything but every few weeks I'm in there and sometimes more than that so this is a great tool again I'll have everything linked down below this doesn't cost you anything and it's very valuable if you're wanting to get into any of the Microsoft the Azure stuff you also have the free 12 months with Azure too that you can sign up for it's going to let you do the VMs the developer one doesn't give you the free 12 months of the virtual machines and things like that, to my knowledge. So this would be separate from that. So you definitely want to check this out if you wanted to get into the virtual machines or you want to get the AZ-104 certification. You want to take a look at the stuff that's offered for free here. You also have the Microsoft Learn product which is basically their documentation for all of the Azure offerings and other Microsoft offerings. This content in, the, in Microsoft Learn is used as a training for their certifications. Now, granted, the fundamental certifications you can probably pass with just the Microsoft Learn, but the associate level certifications, from my experience, you're going to need some hands-on, you know, on-the-job kind of work. But you can do that in your home lab, and be able to pass these certifications before you ever even get a job. And these certifications are going to help you get that job that you're wanting. You also have the Microsoft Virtual Training Days. They offer them usually a few times a week. They are pre-recorded generally. And they're going to go over very specific offerings that Microsoft has. So it's definitely something that you'll want to check out too. Especially if you're wanting to get a certification. You also have John Seville's YouTube channel. It's a great YouTube channel for all the Microsoft and Azure things. So if that's something you're interested in, I've used him a lot before I've taken any of the exams. So you definitely want to check out his channel. It'll be linked down below. 
Now, when it comes to Amazon and Google Cloud, I don't have anywhere near as much of experience with them as I do the Microsoft stuff, but they do have free tiers, so you can get in there and play around with the products for a 12-month period of time, at least for Amazon. Amazon also offers training, and like I said, Google offers a free tier, and Google also offers training. So any one of these services that you want to learn more about, there are free resources out there for you to learn more about them and get hands-on with them as well. On the networking side of things, I don't have a lot of networking experience, but yeah, I did mention Packet Tracer and GNS3. You can use those to set up simulated labs for networking type stuff. And David Bomble, I think that's how you say his name, I uh, apologize if I butchered his last name, but he has a great YouTube channel. It talks all about security and networking, and he also has this free Cisco CCNA course. So if you're wanting to get into networking, you definitely want to check out his course. He is high quality and covers all of the things that you're going to need to know. And if you take the CCNA and you pass it, that could be your ticket into an uh, associate network engineer role at a company that uses Cisco. There's other vendors out there for networking equipment like Aruba, and they all have their own certifications and stuff. But Cisco CCNA is a pretty standard one. And I think if you pass the CCNA, even a company that's not a Cisco shop is probably still going to consider you for an associate level position because if you can learn this you're going to be able to translate that knowledge maybe with a little work into the other services like aruba as well so that's going to be it for this video like i said i hope it was informative for you you enjoyed the content and it really helped you out if you like this video be sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel and i'll see you again next time thanks